Hello. Hello, everyone. Hi, good afternoon. I hope you're having a wonderful afternoon and thank you for joining us in this webinar organized by the Celtic Publishing named Let's Fall in Love with Autumn. I want to thank you all for taking your time and dedicating an hour to our uh, webinar and I really hope you can find some useful ideas to use in your classroom. So let's get started. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Katerina Nicola. I am a qualified teacher of English and I've been teaching English for almost 20 years now. Um, I've been teaching English to students of all ages, all levels in a few different countries. For the last five years, I've been teaching English in Italy. And I can say I really, really enjoy this experience. All right, so let's start. First, let me share my screen. Okay, so today's webinar, it's called Let's Fall in Love with Autumn. And we're gonna find out um, lots of ideas. I hope you find lots of ideas useful for um, your classroom. Okay. What's on the menu? Well, of course, the menu intends to what we have in the um, what we have in the following slides, what we are going to talk about. So today we are going to look at how to increase our students' motivation through engaging tasks and games. And of course, we are also going to look at some Halloween activities for students of the primary school mostly, but also you can adapt for other levels, not only primary school students, also for older ones. All right, let's continue. I hope you can all hear me well. Okay, let me start with this quote. Autumn's whisper to the wind, I fall but always rise again. It's a lovely quote from Angie Will and Crusby. I fall but always rise again. I personally love this. And it refers to this season, this that time of the year, this season of colorful, when nature prepares, sorry, <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, when nature prepares for winter, leaves turn brown, children go back to school, and lots of popular festivities in this wonderful uh, season. Well, of course, as teacher, we can bring all that atmosphere in our classroom. Happy fall to you all. Let's look at some interesting facts about autumn. So let's talk about how we call it, so the word fall. We all think, we tend to think that fall is the American version of the word autumn, but in fact, it was used in England until the 17th century and um, as a shortening of the phrase fall of the leaves. The word autumn entered English from the French language. I'm not sure I can pronounce in French well, or tone, I don't know. And it became common usage after the 18th century. Another interesting fact, it starts, the season of autumn starts around 22nd of September, actually, when both day and night are equal. But for practical reason, the 1st of September is taken as a start of the season just to fit into the calendar with three months calendar so for practical reason we consider first of september as the beginning of autumn here's another interesting fact people born in autumn live longer most of people who have reached 100 years of age are mostly born in the months of autumn. So if someone of you is born in September, October, November, you're lucky, probably you will reach 100 years of age. At least the studies say so. Let me move on. I'm going to um, show you this picture. And I would like you to take your time and look at it carefully. 
what I want you to do is think about what you see in the picture. What words in English can you associate to this picture, to this image? What can you say? How can you describe this in English? What do you see? Okay. Think about nouns or adjectives or phrases that you can relate to this image. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to write um, something on the chat box. Well, um, I hope you are familiar with the chat feature, the chat box of the Zoom. You can find that below where it's written chat. If you click on that, you will be able to text a message. So I'm going to ask you to type in the chat box as many words as you can think of that relate to this picture. You have one minute, go. You can start now. So let me repeat, type in the chat box as many words as you can think of that relate to the picture. It could be adjectives, it could be nouns, it could be anything. Yes. Why melancholy? Okay, oh, it's going so fast. Yes, it's foggy, Stefania Bridge, yes. That's right. Oh my God, it's jumping. I can't read all of them. Trees, leaves, yes. Sadness. So many of you are telling sadness, really? Sky, yes. Tree, okay, thank you. Nina, yes. Maria, that's right. Marie Lisa, I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name. Yellow leaves, thank you. Romantic, yes. Take a walk, well done. Raise, trees, calm. Yes, Laura, I agree. <laughs> Yes, fresh air, Stefania, well done. Yes, that's a lot, good. Serenity, yes, river. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, calm words are written. So many of you have uh, repeatedly said um, romantic calm, loneliness, quiet, yes. Okay, thank you. Time is up, one minute is over. Well done to those of you that wrote more than five words in one minute. And I'm going to move on to the next slide. Well done to all of you. Well done, really. The next slide is coming. You probably typed one of these and many other more words. So probably, you see, yes, a little bit foggy. More messages are coming. Thank you, Antonella, yes. Yes, Olga, it's a little bit foggy, Olga. Yes, it's usually in the, in the autumn like this. That's right. I'm going to stop reading your messages and here we go. So um, probably you have written woods, water, autumn, orange, red, which I really saw. Landscape, mist, foggy, lots of you said foggy, cold, romantic, etc. isolated, um, short trip, somebody mentioned take a walk, um, picnic, fresh air, animal, birds, classic, all etc. So well done, one more time. <clears throat> So I'm going to use the same um, picture and I'm going to move to the next slide. Okay. So here we go, the next slide, but it's obviously a different picture, a different place. And here are some questions for you. I just want to tell that it's not necessary to type anything on this stage. Just read the question, think about what you can say. Would you like to visit this place? I think yes, it's beautiful. What are three things that you like about this place? Some of you might say the green area, I don't know, the river, the bridge, etc. Is there something you don't like and why? What can you say? How can you answer? Can you find something you don't like about this place? I think it's a little bit difficult to find something you don't like, but maybe you can say it's isolated, far away. It could be dangerous in the, at night. Um, the next one is, who would you like to go there with? Would you like to go there with your friends, with your family? I don't know. And if you travel there, what items or what things would you bring with you? So if you ask me, I would bring my camera to take pictures. 
I would bring a book to sit down and read. And probably I would bring some snacks in case I get hungry. Okay, with your family, <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's right. I'd like to see some animals, wonderful. Thank you for participating so many, so many texts. All right, um, it's time to move on to the next slide. And let's see. So the previous activity was a typical example of using a picture as a warm up at the beginning of a lesson of the class. So you um, might know already, and I'm sure most of you know what are the warm ups. They are short, quick, simple activities which are designed to lead into the lesson topic to get students' attention, to help them switch from Italian into English. When we enter the class, we all know that sometimes some of the students might be distracted, some might be looking outside the window and things like that. So what we want to do to bring them, to draw their attention, to help them think, start thinking in English and get ready for what's coming next. So this is a very important stage of the um, lesson, the first one, the warm up. Um, and the warm ups can be pictures, the easiest thing. You can find pictures everywhere online, magazines, on the uh, course books. You can use the pictures already there. There are so many books which are well uh, designed, beautifully designed with lots of pictures that you can use as warm ups. It could be a set of questions. You just write on the board a set of questions that you want your students to answer. It could be a short quiz or a short video, a song. Children love songs. A quick game, a set of realia. You can bring small objects, put them in a box and take them out and say, what's this, what I have in the box? Immediately you will draw attention or other things. Okay, so as I said before, I'm sure most of you use warm ups, but I'd like you to tell me and how often do you use warm ups in the class? So this is the question for you. Please tell me, type A, B, C in the chat box. Type never, type A, sorry, for never. I need to do other more important exercise in class. There might be people, teachers who decide to do um, other things at the beginning, exercises like grammar practice, etc. They don't think they need to spend time to warmers. Type B for sometimes only if there is enough time. Type C for very often. If you think they are a necessary step of the lesson, please type a, B, or C in the chat box. Oh, that's lovely. That is wonderful. Yes, Sonia, Elvira, Katya. Yes, Anna, that's true. Lots of you have chosen C. We often, yes, make 10 minutes. I, <laughs> okay, I didn't finish that message. Someone wrote that uh, you use 10 minutes of the lesson for warm ups, and that's wonderful. I need to do it because I work in an infant school. Absolutely, yes young children are uh, even more challenging to, um, you're welcome, Serena. Um, they are very um, difficult to draw attention. So yes, we need to come up with a variety of different uh, ideas to draw their attention. Okay, time to move on to the next slide. I'm not going to read any more messages. Thank you so much for um, answering and participating. And Okay, so well done, most of you, all of you actually answered um, C. So you actually do use warmers in class. We have a beautiful picture here of this little boy getting ready to do exercise. And he says, I need to warm up my muscle, which intense, well, obviously the muscle here is the brain. And we need to use warm up activities because they generate curiosity, they capture students' attention. We've talked about this before. They prepare them for the next stage of the lesson, improve focus, increase motivation, help them to get into the English mode, start lesson on an energetic note. They get excited, that's energy that you bring in the class. 
And they can be used for many reasons. You can go back to what you have taught the previous lesson, revise vocabulary, you can introduce new words, you can practice uh, grammatical um, structures, variety of them, depending on what you choose. They are used to improve fluency, to make the students speak, to become fluent, to improve their speaking skills. And also they noticing skills. For example, if you show them a picture and you ask them, what can you see? You are practice, you are asking them to, uh, to practice and notice and to notice, to focus, to quickly understand and find different items in the picture. So that is improving noticing skills. And then of course, to train them to think fast, to go fast and brainstorm vocabulary. Okay. So pictures are very widely used for different um, purposes. We're going to look at a simple, very, very simple pictures. There are lots of similar pictures in different textbooks. And depending, so what can you do with a picture, a blackboard and a piece of chalk? You can teach English, of course. Oh yes, you can. Uh, you can build the lesson based on a picture only. So depending on the learner's age and their language abilities, we can adapt the type of the question we ask them, as well as the amount of language we expect our young learners to produce. So what do we expect them to say? They say a full sentence, they say a full paragraph, or just a little word. They give you just a little word because uh, they are very young at the very beginning. Um, at this point, I'd like you to look at this picture. Think for a moment, how would you use this image to start the class? How would you use this? What would you ask the students? What would you say? Which vocabulary items would you revise? Probably you would revise colors, numbers. It's very obvious. Which structures would you focus on? You can, you can use it. Are there any, the question form, or there is, there are. Are there any animals? Is there any, um, I don't know, is there a cat? Okay, so is there, are there, etc. Different grammatical structures. And let's uh, see. For very young learners, the one that really have very limited vocabulary, um, first and second grade of primary school, we can tell them, we can start by asking them to point, just point. Okay, point at the flower, point at the butterfly, and so on. We can ask them which colors or numbers can you see? Which animals can you see? Which numbers are in blue colors? So they're going to look and find what is the blue, which is the number in the blue, and they say, wow, that's right, number two and 10 is blue. And you go on with a different color. Which numbers are orange? Well, there's one, there's etc., and so on. Um, you can also play a game. You can ask them to look at the numbers, to look at the pictures um, for five seconds, cover the picture and ask them which number is blue and see if they remember. And that is the fast thinking and memory. You can also ask them to count the flowers, the birds, let's count the flowers, especially very young uh, age and they love repeating the numbers that go in code. Let's count the flowers, one, two, three, four, five, six, they love it and continue. Okay, and they uh, get the feeling that they are speaking, they're learning and they are doing well, which is quite important. Now, some tips. When we do similar activities, uh, obviously all of you um, know, or you are aware that we need to keep the language simple and repet repetitive. We don't want to confuse our students. We repeat the same structure until they get it and then we go on to next one so simple repetitive we also give a lot of encouragement when they give us full sentences we write on the board sample answers to give a starting point etc of course we show enthusiasm we are very happy when our students are able to produce good english we're really happy we show them to um, we show it to them we never discourage uh, if they make mistakes, just simply demonstrate or repeat what they should say. 
of course, with the, um, oops. All right, okay, <laughs> we need to go back. So of course we need to keep the activity, sorry for that. Uh, we need to keep the activity fast going. We don't need to take space from all the lesson with one picture. We continue really fast and be positive. Let's look at the same picture. How can we use it in the class with a little bit older students? So instead of asking them to point, we can say, what can you see? What's the weather like? Is it night or day? Is it summer or winter? Then you can point to someone and say, what is she wearing? And they should be able to tell you she's wearing a, um, a dress or a t-shirt or whatever. Uh, what are they doing to practice actions? Um, where are they to give you the, um, the place? Are they sad? Are they happy to practice emotions or to practice the adverbs? Um, place adverbs like next to the boy, what's under the tree, what's behind the girl, etc. Then you can ask also, so uh, where is the basket, the sack, the slide, etc. I'm sure you have lots of ideas, other ideas how to use and what to ask to the, tu to the students using a picture. Let me move on to all the students, like fifth of grade of primary school. Uh, we're talking here about students around the age of 10 nine, 10 years old. So at this age, they should be able to produce more language, give more details instead of giving you one word answer. So um, you can ask for personal uh, relations. So how often do you go there? What do you usually play at the park? Or when was the last time you were there? Here we have the past simple, maybe it's not uh, in the fifth grade, but still you keep it simple just was and were, you don't complicate with other past simple verbs. All right. Okay, I think we can go on to the next. As we said before, we also play games and we can look at how we can, uh, a couple of games using the same picture. So the first one is a yes or no game or guess who is a title of a game. So when the teacher um, decides, but keep it secret to be one of the characters in the image, then you ask your students to find out who that character is. You can't tell them, but only answer their question with a yes or no. Okay, so they ask you something, you can tell them only yes or no, you don't say, uh, you don't reveal more information. For example, they can ask you, are you an animal in the picture? No. Are you a person? Yes. Are you a boy? No. Have you got blonde hair? Have you got dark hair? Are you cutting the cake? And yes, this is the person or the character. And if there is time, you can continue in pairs. They can continue. You put students in pairs. One of them decides on one character. The other asks the question. And they uh, then they change turns. Obviously, we need to set a time limit to keep it fast. So you can you have to find the character within two minutes. Two minutes over, you win or lose the game. Or you can set a maximum number of questions, up to 10, for example. So you can ask 10 questions and try to find that, first, uh, that character within 10 questions. OK, this is quite popular. I think lots of you already use this kind of activity. Let me show a different one. Okay, this is very popular. I spy with my little eyes. Okay, so this is another game that little children, children love playing in the class, usually at the end of the class, but also you can um, play it or use this activity in a different um, time, depending on the needs. All right, so this teacher must start. You say, I, you decide on the word, on uh, item, an object, for example, this, 
and the student you say i spy with my little eyes something white don't tell what it is they have to find they ask you is a white flower sorry no it's a white t-shirt no it's a white what other things are white okay there's the door a white door yes well then now it's your turn you give them the opportunity to do the same okay and obviously there are lots and lots of games we can integrate in our lesson but is it a good idea to play games in class let me see if you want to type yes if you find playing games in the class a good idea type yes in the chat box if you don't think games are appropriate in the lesson type no please you can type now Yes, absolutely, Francesca. Yes, Anna. That's right. Games are good. Yes, I agree. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, okay. I got the point. You also love games and I'm not alone. Yes, Serena. Thank you. It's a very good, okay. <laughs> okay. For every level, yes, that's a good point. That's a good point. We think about games and children, but that's for every level, for every age. Also, adults love uh, playing games, appropriate games, obviously, appropriate uh, level of difficulty. It depends on the class. You are right, Carmen. It depends on the class. Sometimes maybe it's a bit too challenging, so you are the one to decide if it's a good idea or not. Um, I think you're right. It depends also on the class. <clears throat> it motivates you, right? Yes, Elvira. Okay, so I'm going to move on. With a different, um, as I promised in the beginning, we also are going to look today at some Halloween activities. So let's move on is that time of the year it's halloween let's get spooky and play some games i personally love this time of the year and in the next slide we're going to look at a board game this is also taken from the celtic publishing books um, you can find it on level two i think if i'm not mistaken it's a board game it's called it starts with um, what you need is a counter and a dice. You throw the dice and move your counter. So obviously it could be two or three or more players. And what they need to do when they land their dice, um, land to a letter, they need to find something beginning with that letter. It gives them an opportunity to revise or learn words about Halloween while playing and having fun. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next slide with some more worksheets. That's right. Okay, two more Skede worksheets. You can find these on Lo Schedario di Inglese by Celtic Publishing. Lo Schedario di Inglese number one. Halloween tic tac toe. You give uh, students this board and they have to cut the pumpkins and the black cats and play the tic-tac-toe. It's similar in Italian, tris, but I might be mistaken, I'm not sure. Another one is Halloween snakes and ladders and they have to move levels. These, um, obviously, you can, I don't know if you agree with me, but I think these are more appropriate for low levels because there's not much language to produce, while here could be used for a little bit higher, older students, like third, fourth or fifth grade. And these two uh, worksheets you can find, Los Quedario, you can find in the book Los Quedario de Inglese by Celtic Publishing. This one here is quite interesting. You ask the students to understand or to find out something by describing it. So for example, it's a black, 
It is black, sorry, my eyes. It has got whiskers. What is it? Can you find it? What is it? It's a black cat. Okay, and so on. So definition or description, students need to find what is it and they can play with a dice. Another one is Halloween snakes and ladders, right? It's, um, as I said before, you can find all this and Los Quedadines with lots of other ideas, beautifully um, designed book for teachers of primary school. Let me move on. These two slides now are taken from the internet. Um, it was created by Twinkle. It's very popular. Lots of teachers use Twinkle. We can download um, from the site very nice activities. This one here, if you're lucky and have um, an interactive whiteboard in the classroom, the LIM, if you have LIM in the classroom, you can download and play in a PowerPoint slide uh, format. You click on each number. No. <laughs> Are you getting dizzy? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what you can do, click on the number, it appears a question. What they need to do is name three things, depending on different um, numbers here, different questions. So, for example, name three things about Halloween foods, three spooky animals, three scary people, and so on. Okay, I find this really nice. And here are some more activities. You're gonna find all this on the slides at the end of the webinar uploaded in the uh, Celtic, uh, Celtic webinar um, website. So if I go a little bit quickly, don't worry, you can have access after the webinar. Okay, we were talking earlier about I spy with my little eye game. Here is a game, this game related to Halloween. So you present the, uh, the board, the, the, the worksheet, and you say, I spy with my little eye, what? A skeleton. And they have to find it. Probably you need first to make sure that students understand the vocabulary. Maybe you want to teach these words. Some of them are quite um, known. Some they might, don't, uh, they might not know. So we need to teach them before playing to ensure that participate and they feel confident. Okay. Another activity for Halloween is the scavenger hunt. Um, probably you are aware with this and it's uh, quite used also in different contexts. You can play scavenger for Halloween, for Easter, for summer, for whatever topic you choose. You give students a list of different things and then you ask them to find as many as they can within five minutes. If you're lucky to get your students out, outside the classroom, it's even better. Mm, some schools, they decorate um, with a decorate, Halloween decoration. You have around spiders, nets and pumpkins, so it's easier for them to find. And the first group of students or the first student who brings all the list with all the items found, that is the student who wins. All right. Okay, so... That is for the Halloween activities. I hope you found something useful. Okay, and let me continue. As we said before, we talked about games in the classroom. We're going to spend one more minute on games and gamification probably it's getting it's getting um, more and more popular the concept of gamification but uh, what is it we're going to look at it in a moment and close your books and let's play a game 
the phrase the most students can't wait to hear from their teacher. I'm sure you agree. When you tell them, close your books, let's play a game, they get really enthusiastic. What is gamification? Let's look at the concept. What is it? What exactly uh, it means? So um, this concept, this gamification, that refers to the application of game-based elements into a non-game settings. In other words, making mini games while doing normal routine tasks. Let me explain a little bit better with a very simple um, example. So let's say you are writing emails and you feel bored. How about giving yourself five points for each email sent? If you are doing the dishes, give yourself a point for each um, dish that you wash and so on. So do you feel still bored with so many points earned? I don't think so. That is the concept behind gamification. So putting the elements of a game into a different, in the learning context in the classroom or also outside the classroom, it's not necessary. So gamification in education, it is used because studies have shown that it um, provides higher engagement and concentration levels. It creates more relaxed atmosphere. It makes students feel less afraid to fail. They don't feel they're doing an exam or test or an exercise. They feel like playing a game. So it takes out the barrier of making a mistake of failing. So that really helps. And also it gives, uh, it gives immediate feedback. It makes progress become more visible, more fun productivity, more autonomy. Okay, so we help students to be more independent. Sometimes it helps to socialize and it can be applied for most types of learners, even difficult learners with some kind of disorder. They respond very well to games and uh, gamification. Okay, let's move on. Here we have some example uh, of using games and technology. This is a very popular app. Probably you would know this. I would say this is uh, very appropriate for students of middle school and high school, all the students actually. Maybe it's not very uh, appropriate for elementary school, for primary school students, because it involves some skills that maybe it's not developed um, in students of uh, eight years old, etc. So it is developed by the Cambridge assessment. It's called Quiz Your English and improves uh, your language skills. It's used practice, improve their language skills. As you can see, it can be played in different devices. It goes well in a tablet and computer and a phone, Android or iOS. One student, one uh, person, one player uh, against another opponent. There is a time limit. There is a sentence. I'm not sure if you can follow. There is here, there is a sentence with a gap. Then you take four options, which you need to select one. The green one is the right one. The red one, unfortunately, is not. it's not the correct one. And you also can challenge other people, invite friends, play. And each time that you complete a level, you go up and up. And that's stimulating because you are moving, you're um, making progress. Other similar websites where you can create games Quizlet, it's excellent for vocabulary, especially for vocabulary. This is an image, and here you can find the website. Another one is Wordwall. Most of you might be quite familiar. Wordwall is really easy to use, really straightforward for the teachers to create a game. And it can be a game uh, for vocabulary in English, for um, grammar, but also can be used for other subjects. I've seen lots of students uh, playing World World for mathematics, geography, and other things. And here are some more uh, examples. Kahoot is really popular. Okay, we're going to move very quickly. Time is running. Games in the classroom. Okay, this is my favorite. 
It is called the fly swatter game. And here are the fly swatter. When I enter in the class with a fly swatter, kids get crazy. They're really enthusiastic. Let's see how we can play this. So um, you select two students. You give one fly swatter to each of them. You ask them, obviously, to come on board. Meanwhile, you draw two big circles on the board, write a food category in each of them. For example, in one circle, you're going you're to have fruit. In the other circle, you're going to have vegetables. And the two students standing in front of the board with a fly swatter ready. You can get an idea from the picture here. Then you, move, you continue, you say a word that is related to this topic, the food in this case. The first student who hits the board in the right circle, that student wins the game. So for example, you say lettuce, they should hit the circle, which is written vegetables, of course. Um, a small piece of advice, make sure to set the game in a place with enough space. Sometimes they get competitive. They're so excited, there's so much energy, and they, so we need to set that in a spacey uh, place. Okay, I'm going to move on quickly to the next slide. Here's, here is another example of a game in the classroom. It's called the last word. Let me try to explain this quickly, how to play this. It's more appropriate for revision of vocabulary. You have, let's say that you finished your class, you taught, I don't know, clothes, for example, and then you need to play this game. Within 20 seconds, two students, A and B, they say uh, an alternative. So one says one word, the other says another word, then student A again, student B again. They keep telling words related to clothes, boots, t-shirt, skirt, scarf, shoes, and so on. Now, they can't repeat the same word. The la the, in, uh, they keep saying these words, and the last one who says the last word before the time finishes, that student wins the point. I hope it's clear. <laughs> you can use a timer, a 20-second timer. You can find this on YouTube. Just type um, timer with a bomber, type on YouTube timer with a bomber, then put the cell, you can select 20 seconds or 30 seconds if you want. And then there you're going to see them running and really trying hard to say the last word before the bomb explodes. And that's really good practice. They are playing, yes, but they are also revising the. Um, the vocabulary that you have taught. Okay, there is one last example of a game I've prepared for you today, and this is a listening activity. So if you're like me, who like play music in the class, this activity is worth trying. Now, before the class, you need to select a song. It could be from their textbook, or it could be from YouTube, that's uh, up to you. What is necessary, obviously, the song should be related to what you are teaching that day. So to each student, you have to assign a word from the lyrics, from the words of the song, from the lyrics. Give one word to each student, a different one, if possible. While you play the song, if the student listens to his or her word, they, what they need to do, you can understand from the title, what they need to do is stand up, then sit down. The song goes on, they listen again the same word, they go up and down again, and that makes them listen more carefully because they can't wait for their word to come. So that is a trick to make them pay attention. So, for example, this about um, song is about autumn, and you can find this on YouTube. I don't think we have time now to. Uh... All right, I'm going to try and play the song. I hope I can. Yes, it's working. Bear with me. Yes, let's listen to the song. This is about autumn.
Okay, I need to stop for a second. As we said, as we said before, we need to give one word. Um, repeat. I think I messed up something. Just give me a second. Uh, what can you see? Everywhere. Basket, pumpkins in the box. Apples in the basket, pumpkins in the box. The trees are okay, sorry. I'm sorry for that. So let me um, say that again. Assign one word to each student, for example, brown, red, etc. They listen to the song and they go up and down. Brown is autumn again. Okay, I'm sure you can find this uh, on YouTube. You One more time. are going to find the link later on in the slides. Okay. So that was all from me today. Am I sharing? Okay. All right, so this is... <laughs> all right. Okay, let's try this one more time. I think I might need a little bit of help. <laughs> there should be... <laughs> okay, somebody's already using the autumn song, this wonderful. Oh, we finished, yes. Okay. All right. So, so that's all from me today. Thank you so much for participating. I really hope you found something useful. Remember to follow Sue um, Segwiti, Sue, www.celticpublishing.com, Celtic, Celtic, Celtic Publishing on, F, uh, on the Facebook. You can also write to this email address and the next webinar from Francesco Cotichella on All for One. That's wonderful. In November, see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for participating.